You asked for it, here it is. I am going to be pitting the brand new DJI Mini 3 Pro in an urban range test against two of this drone's major competitors, the DJI Mini 2 and the Autel Nano Plus. And a little spoiler alert, for two of the drones I've just mentioned, this test goes incredibly badly. So let's get into it. So first of all, if you are familiar with my channel, welcome back. If you are new around here, my name's Gavin and this is the new DJI Mini 3 Pro and I'm going to be pitting this drone against the DJI Mini 2, the Air 2S and the Autel Nano Plus in a series of videos. So if you're not subscribed already, please consider doing so and hit that bell notification to be notified the minute I post one of my reviews. But on with the video today then. And basically this video has come because so many of you have been asking for this sort of video in my comments section. This will generally be my first video that I've done using the DJI Mini 3 Pro and I decided to jump in at the deep end and not sugarcoat anything and just put this drone into battle in one of the most challenging conditions ever. Now just to prep you guys for those of you in the US for example or in countries without restrictions here in the UK, it is basically considered that you need to keep your drone into visual line of sight, and that is basically stated as 500 meters. So before you switch off and go, oh my God, he's only going to potentially fly a drone to 500 meters, don't you worry because this test is going to be more than enough to be able to show the differences between the three drones. Now, when DJI launched the Mini 2 over 18 months ago and it came along with its OcuSync 2.0 connection, it was a complete game changer. OcuSync gave the drone the dynamic ability to switch frequencies and change channels to keep a signal as strong and as long as possible. And basically in the DJI Mini 3 Pro, we have the follow on version to that OcuSync 3.0 or O3 if you wish. This promises a much longer range and it promises a 1080p feedback to our controller, whether it be the phone or the new RC controller. So I should genuinely see there should be a major improvement between this new DJI Mini 3 Pro and of course the old DJI Mini 2. So where does the Auto Nano Plus fit in? Well, the Auto Nano Plus is of course quite an expensive drone and it hasn't really shaken up the market as much as I genuinely thought it would. All the times I have flown the drone, I've been severely impressed. And I've been quite impressed with the signal performance in urban areas on the Autel Nano. So because it is genuinely a serious contender to this drone, if you are, of course, open to anything that isn't DJI. I initially, I wanted to pit this drone against the DJI Air 2S. However, the trouble with that is due to the restrictions in the UK, basically, I can't, okay, because I'm not allowed to overfly in residential areas with a drone of the size of the DJI Air 2S. So thus basically meaning that this could potentially be pretty much the best drone in the 249 gram category with similar performance to the DJI Air 2S. That of course you can fly everywhere. So this test is pretty goddamn important. But then again, I have waffled on it enough. So what I'm going to do is roll the footage. I'm gonna be doing this as a voiceover because of course I already know the results and let's just pick it up at the end and we'll see exactly what happens. And what I want you to do is at this moment in time, feel free to pop your uh, comment in the section below and tell me which one of these three drones you think is gonna win this test in an urban area. And then of course, we'll see if you're right at the end. So here's all three feeds and I'm going to watch them all at the same time. The Mini 2 and the Mini 3 are side by side for a nice and easy comparison. And of course the Autel on the top. Pop it into the settings on the DJI drones. You can see they are both left in auto and dual frequency and they have both picked a 5.8 gigahertz frequency channel. But of course it can dynamically change in flight. The Autel, we don't have any visual indication as to what frequency it's running. So we're gonna to have to leave it as it is. So what we're gonna do is put three drones up in the air and begin the flight. So as you can see, see we are flying all three drones at 40 meters gimbal 20 degrees down uh, and one thing is quite apparent that the DJI Mini 3 has got 
much more speed than a Mini 2, especially more speed than the Autel. However, I am kind of slowing down a little bit uh, because I've got a road coming up and I don't really want to fly cars if I can help it. Um, the DJI Mini 2 feed is really stuttering already, um, which is quite a surprise, whereas the DJI Mini 3 feed looks to be absolutely fine. And you can see the Mini 2 really is stuttering like hell, but the Mini 3 is doing an absolutely fantastic job and the feed looks so much better. Uh, that 1080p quality looking absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. But as you can see on the DJI Mini 3, we have just stuttered and we've got the same on the DJI Mini 2. What is actually going Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. Um, let's just pause that there. Um, so, guys, we've got a bit of a problem. Um, I don't think that was supposed to happen. Um, both the DJI Mini 2 and the DJI Mini 3 Pro with OcuSync have just disconnected um well that's awkward okay okay let's play the rest of the tape and let's just see what happens so basically looking at the auto then it is actually well behind uh it really isn't actually coping with the wind as much as the other two drones did um but the signal does seem to be quite stable a little bit of uh lag there but ultimately it's keeping a strong connection and as you can see the DJI Mini 3 uh, well that's kind of returning to home um, and if we look at the Autel we've just flown past the place where both DJI drones actually stopped um, that's quite incredible uh, the DJI Mini 2 is telling us it's returning to home uh, the Mini 3 is returning to home um, so okay let's just continue with the feed on the Autel Evo Nano then and Guys, just to narrate this at the same time, I genuinely do not like flying over residential areas like this, but when this is a, a tough test, of course, it needs must. And don't be fooled by the distance. We are flying quite low at only 41 meters. And this is a basically concrete jungle with absolutely packed full of Wi-Fi interference and we are most certainly going to be affected by it. And as you can see overall, the... Uh the Autel Evo Nano seems to be doing absolutely fine. A um, little bit of stutter there as we're getting close to that 500 meters away. Uh, but like I said, of course, there we go. Image transmission signal is weak. It has actually dropped uh, the signal quality slightly. But looking at the telemetry, we have got full control. We're not losing our signal. Um, everything seems to be absolutely okay and of course we are remaining in full control of the drone at all times. It's quite clear so far that the Autel doesn't actually manage the wind as well as the other drones even though coincidentally in my wind test it actually did manage it. Um, but ultimately as we are heading back towards home then and back towards my home location uh, the signal seems to um, improve. We've got a absolutely clear crystal clear signal but guys i'm genuinely shocked at what has just happened um the dji mini 3 and the mini 2 uh, both obviously caught out at around 350 meters certainly not what i was expecting i would have anticipated the mini 3 to have got much better than the dji mini 2 um, but ultimately as we are coming to the end of this run um get close to 100 meters away we are pretty much back to our home point and um yeah the auto nano has safely navigated the entire circuit no disconnections and uh, yeah it's about to land and that wraps up the urban environment testing do you know sometimes when tests don't go to plan um okay i'm fibbing if i'm completely honest with you this does not surprise me whatsoever the dji mini 2 i have covered numerous times um on this channel regarding having signal breakups in urban areas however the dji mini 3 pro nobody can say my drone is faulty uh, at the end of the day i was obviously pointing the controller towards the drone uh, and most importantly they cannot be denied the fact that both of these drones dropped out at pretty much the exact same point whereas the auto evo nano was actually able to just continue flying along uh, with a couple of signal dropouts um, but ultimately we kept full control with no return to home situations whatsoever uh, this does not surprise me at all all of my testing uh, with the Autel Evo Nano uh, this has had an absolutely fantastic signal
but certainly you know this is obviously not going to please some people i do appreciate that and you can stick that uh, thumbs down on my video if you wish but this was a fair and frank test and unfortunately uh, the dji mini 3 didn't actually perform as good as what even i anticipated i thought it would have done a little bit better so the results are the results the test is the test as long as i have offered you a full frank and fair uh, result i think you can appreciate the effort put into this and uh there's nothing much else to say, really. Um, interesting one. So I will basically be uh, doing another test with these three drones and sticking the Air 2S into the mix for some future videos. And one of those will be a really uh, in intricate, hopefully, video and photo comparison so you can see exactly whether the DJI Mini 3 Pro is worth it on camera quality alone. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you're awesome. Until next time, see you again soon.